I want to make a short video just to discuss a couple of things based on all the videos that have come out recently and based on all the live shows and stuff like that. Just explain briefly where I'm at or where I believe uh, we're at, stuff like that. Initially, like I had said in my solve, and I also said it back on uh, with Toby on the AGK show back in 2018 when he was discussing uh, my proxy theory that I have, that I believe that there was basically a, a land trust deed side of the treasure chest. That is the quote unquote title that you actually seek. I always thought that there were two troves, okay? The first one, we would all agree that Forrestman put out a treasure chest because that was how he attracted people to the chase. So he put out that treasure chest, which is the, the one that Jack found. And I'm just going to refer to it as the lure because he had to do something like that. Otherwise, nobody would be involved in his treasure hunt. But I always believed that inside of the treasure chest, because of what he says in the poem, I give you title, okay? I believe that there was a title, and I believe that that title set up a legal barrier so that he could be 100% sure whether or not the, the trove was found, okay? Because that would be inside of the box of the gold stuff that Jack found, right? So after you find that, then you would have to go and you get the real trove. I've always believed that since way back. But that was why... AGK had me on the show to explain that theory anyway, because that that would be one way that he could be sure that nobody would stumble upon whatever it is that, that he had out there. And we know from these videos that uh, Dal created, the interviews, that for his friend, when he's discussing San Lazaro, he mentions that there's going to be you know documents that he had found, and he knew for sure that it's going to change history. So basically... That that would essentially be knowledge, right? So I believe that that's the real trove. So back in the day, like I said, I thought there was a title to some place, and I had no idea where that is. I assumed it was probably in New Mexico, and very recently, based on discussions from Street and other people, um, I'm believing that it's tied to San Lazaro, especially considering the videos that Boris Fenn came out with, where he indicates that he had found documents that'll change history. He found logs, ledgers, and stuff like that um, between the Spanish and the Indians that were living here at the Pueblo. That's a recent thing. But, but basically, I always believed that there was a, a title in the box, okay? And when you found the box, after you got the box, get the gold and stuff, there would be a title in there that would direct you to another place. So I believe that you wouldn't have to solve that initially. You would just send you there, right? So. A lot of people like to point out that Boris Fenn thought of everything, okay? That means he also thought of an exit strategy. So his exit strategy could have been to have somebody such as Silo go out and retrieve the treasure chest, and he would do that because of all of the, the stuff that's been going on with his family, and he was pressured by the states due to the deaths, and so on and so forth, to put an end to it. So he can essentially end it and still leave the trove out there. The only thing that would be found is the lure, which is what Jack found. So the easy way to do that would be to send somebody, like I said, Silo, for example, retrieve the chest, open it up, take the title out of there, and bring the title back to me. And before you bring it back to me, rehide the chest at this location. I would imagine that the location, if you want to end it fast, all he's got to do is look through his emails and see the easiest place where the majority of the people are currently looking and move it over to an area like that. It'll be found relatively quick because essentially, you know, somebody's going boots on the ground June in that area. So essentially you're putting it out there for them. So they find it, they think they solved the poem and they think it's over, but in reality it's not over because they don't know the real sob. They stumbled on it essentially because poor friend put it there. Um, and as far as the original place, I'm always going to believe that it was at the medicine wheel for reasons that I indicate in my sob. And I mean, it's just, there, there's so many hints. It, it's amazing. But the, the biggest hint is the fact that it reveals try the wheel. And try the wheel is interesting because try the wheel, okay, if you're looking north in the mountains of Santa Fe, the, the largest mountain peak is Wheeler Peak. That's the largest peak. Okay, and that's where Forrest Fenn goes to drop Olga's asses off up in Taos. 
But then he tells you he didn't drop them at the peak of there. He dropped it slightly lower. So if you reveal, like I said, try the wheel, which is not not a coincidence at all. What does he mean by that? Well, it would it would probably you would start out there. So you start out in New Mexico, okay? Now the the you'll eventually quickly discover that um, the Medicine Wheel Coalition for Sacred Sites of North America that was established in 1980. It was established at Taos, New Mexico. Now that's not their address. I believe they have a Montana address, but. But uh, Francis Brown, the print, the president of that coalition, was was in Taos at the Pueblo, which is right below Wheeler Peak. So there's your your tie. And then, like I said, if you if you listen to interviews with Francis Brown, they were pissed off at the sacred sites being taken away from them. And the biggest one they were working on initially was uh, Devil's Peak, I believe it was called, up in Wyoming, where people were climbing it. They were leaving rods and other climbing devices all over the place and uh he did they didn't like that they wanted that area protected okay so they lost it okay now francis brown was really pissed off but i already quote from him here he said all hell would break loose if i went climbing on a washington monument or a national cathedral francis brown said in other words so why are you climbing all of our sacred sites i can't do that on yours but ultimately, they lost it, okay? So then you'll quickly find out that they, the coalition to save the wheel protected the Bighorn Medicine. That was, they, they protected many areas, including areas in, um, in the past, out in uh, New Mexico, I believe Colorado, Arizona, Devil's Tower was, was number one. But in Francis Brown's words, he said, the medicine wheel is our last stand, but we're not going to have it uh, removed. I mean, it's a really sacred place, and there's over 81 Indian tribes that consider it their spiritual home. Like I indicated in the past, if you go to Denver Museum, you'll see a wheel there, too, and it was inspired by the Bighorn Medicine Wheel. I believe there were, there were multiple artists. One of them was Cheyenne, the other was Rapaho. They placed the Cheyenne words, na kev o zim which means we are always returning back home again next to it. So you could essentially consider the home of Brown is Medicine Mountain Peak because that was their spiritual home. They refer to it at all over the place, okay? It's an it's a area of peace, meaning that even if the tribes are at war, they would go to that area, they wouldn't fight each other because that's their church in the mountains. That's where they go to pray. And um, Francis Brown had said that he didn't want the people prevented from going there because he said, why should people be prevented from going to church but they wanted to like charge people and they wanted to set up a viewing center and and it's really embarrassing for the indians and he said no why should people have to make appointments and pay to go to church it's not fair and they they fought uh, basically i don't want to keep going on about it but they fought from 1988 <clears throat> and they won uh, i believe 1996 and then what happened a few years later is the sawmill company in Wyoming uh, filed another lawsuit claiming that it violated their rights and they had to go to court and they won uh, in 2001, I believe, or 2002, and they expanded the area and then they, uh, th so they, they, they completely beat the government and they beat the uh, sawmills. Nobody could, could mess with that area. And because of the fact that they came back, then I guess somebody was mad somewhere because they went and extended the entire protected area to um, over 4,000 acres, right? So it's pretty much up to the forest border. But my main point is that all of that stuff started down here in the Pueblo. Here's, here's Taos Mountain, and here's Wheeler Peak. This is the tallest peak in New Mexico, in the mountains north of Santa Fe. And down here at the Pueblo is where that organization started. So if, if, you, if you were to use my try-to-wheel stuff, for example, at this wheel, Wheeler Peak, you'll notice that if, if there were a sun here, this is this does not represent the sun. It's not a medicine wheel or anything. But we're at roughly eight o'clock. We're at roughly the same distance. Okay, so so this is where it started in Taos Pueblo, and they saved a bunch of places. So, so obviously you're gonna you're gonna quickly discover that one of those places is in Wyoming, as I said, the Bighorn Medicine Wheel. What I think now is after he ended it. 
the trove is still there. Okay, the the pot of gold is gone. The treasure is gone. As far as that goes, the chase is over. Right. So the question is, what happened with the title? And what did he do with with all of that stuff? You know, the titles is very important. If you listen to Forrest Fenn on Lorraine Mills, okay, she asked him who owns the past. The guy who has the title, that's who owns the past. And then if you look at listen to Doug Preston at Collected Works, he's saying to connect the dots of places where Forrest has been with lines. I bet you that'll reveal a hint. You know, and so all of that stuff is essentially going to send you up to, uh, I believe, everything began at the medicine wheel. That's my opinion. That's my sob. I'm not going to discuss it here because I have videos about it if you want to go and see it. But what I believe happened is he sends you down from the wheel that back down to New Mexico, and that's where the real trove is. Okay. And you'll find that out by, by connecting the dots of all the places that he's been. It seems really obvious now over the past few months that I've been listening to other people such as Street and Trusted and, and, and Candy and everybody discuss it, that it would, it would certainly be um, San Lazaro. So, but if you go back through all the hints in the book, you'll quickly discover that, you know, it, it's tied back to Skippy. Skippy drowned over here in Cozumel. And they were here because they were probably researching the Mayans through history. And the Mayans, this is where the Spanish came in, okay, and defeated them. So Forrest Fenn was looking at all those Spanish documents he's talking about. So eventually the Mayans and the Aztecs were chased up through Mexico and into New Mexico, current day New Mexico. And um, that's where the uh, San Lazaro comes in. And you also got to remember Mesa Verde. Forrest Fenn talks about Mesa Verde up in Four Corners, which is tied to the bracelet that he had. Okay? So Forrest Fenn, and here's the Denver Museum. So Forrest Fenn is taking you north, okay? He mentions a lot of these places. He mentions the Spanish armor up at Matitsi, Wyoming, and, and so on and so forth. So, but it all started in Cozumel. We worked our way up, okay? So, Forrest Fenn was always hinting at wheels, you know? I'm talking in circles. And then he mentions T.S. Eliot, we shall not cease from our exploration, and at the end of all our exploring, we'll be to arrive where we started, know the place for the very first time. So, basically, what happens is you find the chest at the wheel, and you're going directly south to the second home of Brown, which is in New Mexico. All of the Plains Indian stuff can be traced DNA wise back to the Mayans and the Aztecs. So, and the Spanish, okay, and the Mexicans were known as the brown skin people. So, the home of Brown, for example, could be like current day Santa Fe, right? So, when you put him below that, it's putting you in it at San Lazaro. Okay, so that's where you would go to get the second trove. And of course, that leads you to the Loretto Chapel the oldest church in the United States. And you're passing right over everything that people like Trust or even Bill Gorman talk about in Colorado. So like I said, that's what I believe. I believe that you were supposed to go up, find a treasure chest up at the medicine wheel by solving the poem up there. Okay, and all the hints took you up there. But when you opened it, you'd find the title, which would send you back to New Mexico. And that's where you hid the actual real trove. That's, that's my belief now and i adjusted it based on what's going on i believe forrest Fenn called it off and moved the chest Wh whatever anybody comes out with like saying you know if the Fenn family or somebody comes out and say yeah this is where the chest was they're telling you where the lure was and basically how forrest Fenn ended it. they're not telling you the, the whole story because they may not even know it because when he would have taken the title it was probably sealed he brings it back to forrest they don't know what's in there the only thing they would know is where they retrieved it, okay? So they would know that, that they retrieved it here and moved it here. They're not going to tell you that they moved it. They're going to tell you where they moved it to. So if they moved it over here, down to Petitia, or whatever, we know it was someplace in Wyoming. But it doesn't really matter because I believe they called it off. There's a couple of interesting things here based on what Doug Preston's comment about connecting lines, and you've seen how I've done that with Kerwin, is connected to Iwa because this is the 109 longitude, 109 west. And in Tuiwa, it's 109 east. So it's around the other side of the world. And then if you take the same flight to the French grave, it would put you over here. 
okay? This blue line. But if you mirror the blue line, it puts you right up in the big horn, right, up, right where the wheel is. So, again, I'm not going to go over all of that stuff, but let's, let's look at a couple of interesting things. Shiloh recently signed uh, a map, okay, and he put one Omega on there. Now, as everybody knows, there's two Omegas in the chase. And Omega is the last alpha, um, letter in the Greek alphabet. It's the 24th letter in the Greek alphabet, the last one. It means the end or the end of a series, to be more specific. The 24th letter in the uh, English alphabet is X. So that would mean that the omega is an X. So Shiloh signed it somewhere over here, just to the right and up above Casper, below the bighorns and between, between the medicine bow and the other mountains down here, and he put one omega. So there's still one more omega left. I also believe that Forrest Van hinted at that in the picture that he released on June 16th, 2020. Stick to it, the key, the gold. Okay. If we look at the five keys that he found in San Lazaro, you can you can tell that the key that's in that picture is not the picture, is not the same key that opens the chest. We've already found discrepancies in the box when we compared to scrapbook 158. And of course, at the auction house, for some reason, they're not showing anybody the inside of the box. Why? So I so there's more than one box. There's more than one box. I believe there's two, but who, but who knows? But I don't believe there's gold in the box. I believe that the, the true trove that's left is knowledge, and Forrest Friend doesn't care if somebody finds it a thousand years from now. It doesn't have any of the same rules that the lure had, the lure chest. The lure chest had to be above 5,000 feet and below 10,200 and had to be north of Santa Fe. The actual trove could be south. Now, is it at San Lazaro? It could be, but I doubt it. I think it's more likely that he moved it. And, and this is my personal opinion, but I believe that Forrest Fenn discovered what existed underneath current day Santa Fe. Okay, up and up in the mountains. And he, he he's telling you that in the video. He, he said they, they left the, the Spanish left really good records. And and Paul. Paul Paul, you know, the, uh, the Paul from the UK, he talked about this in his last video, and he's right on. I mean, it makes sense that, that if the, especially, you know, like I said, you find the trove up here, it's got a title, it's going to send you down. So you're going from this wheel down back down to Wheeler's Peak. You've completed the circle, right? So now, now you're back down there and, and you find it. And it's, if it's history changing in the Southwest, this this is not the Southwest. So changing anything up here is not going to change history in the Southwest. That's going to happen in New Mexico. So so again, all all hands seem to be pointing um, that we should be focused on Santa Fe and um, San Lazaro. It seems pretty obvious to me. So I did did something just messing around uh, that I found interesting. Let's go to the wheel. And I'm not going to be completely accurate with this, but let's pull up the ruler tool, okay? Now, I want you to, to keep track of down here of the degrees that of my line's going to be. And I'll click it. I'll zoom in on the wheel. Okay, here's where you sit. So I'll draw a line there. And I'll pull it out so that goes over the decar because that's where warm water's hot. As you can see, it's 143 degrees roughly, right? Roughly 143 degrees, right? So let me zoom way out now. Let's keep dragging it. Let's move down. Zoom out some more. Keep dragging. Take that line. I don't need to, to be zoomed in anymore because I know it's roughly 143 degrees. Yeah, let's get it about 143 degrees. Okay, there we go. There's 143 degrees. So if I followed the warm water salt line from the wheel, it puts us right where, where Shiloh signed the map. Okay, so let, let's leave that line there now just for grins and giggles. We'll leave it there. I'll click this so that we're, we're, we're north oriented again. So there's our line. Let's make another line now. Let's go straight down. 
And now you'll see again, it's going to be 180 degrees. We're going straight down, right? So let's do it big time. Let's go straight down. There we go, 180 degrees, roughly, right? Look where I went right over. Okay. 180.14 degrees, directly south, right over San, San Lazaro. And, of course, it goes right over downtown Santa Fe. And here's the oldest uh, church, San Miguel Chapel. Here's the Laredo Chapel with the Macriel staircase in there. I believe that the history that he found at San Lazaro is going to be changing stuff up around here. And that's what's going to be changing history, all right? But as you can see, if you go if you go directly north of there, and I'll save that line too. Like I said, if if you go north to where, to where he signed it, okay, right here, just northeast of Casper, and then you you go directly back there like that. This is going right over where warm water salt. Okay, right there. So it's going right over the basin where warm water salt. Um, is that a coincidence? We we don't know. It could. It certainly could be, but I don't think so. I think that Silo's trying to indicate that it wasn't anywhere over here. Okay, it was over here. So I believe that the treasure chest had to be within this area initially, the lure treasure chest. But I believe that the real trove that he gives you title to is, as I said directly down from that at San Lazaro. And incidentally, while I'm here, I want to show you something interesting. He said 300 miles east of Toledo, okay? But he didn't say Toledo, Ohio. So here's Toledo, South Dakota. Let's go in there just for grins and giggles, okay? Click on circle. I'll put my circle directly where Toledo is, and I'll drag it out until we have a 300-mile radius, roughly. Now, I don't know whether it's nautical miles or whatever, but there we go. That's uh, 318 miles, whatever. Radius. Look where it puts us, right in the Bighorn Mountain. Okay, so 300 miles um, west of Toledo. There you go. I don't know. Like I said, it could be miles. It could be nautical miles. That's only 276. If we use nautical miles, which is what airplanes use, that's roughly 300. So it goes out. Obviously, a little bit further. So he said the treasure chest is 300 miles east. I just wanted to put that out there, man, whatever. That obviously is up for interpretation. So that's where we're at. And that's why I've been talking to Street and everybody uh, about San Lazaro, because I believe that the answer that we're looking for now is going to be a lot more difficult to find because the title's gone. I believe that there may be private property involved, and that's why you need the title. So, as we know, San Lazaro is guarded, okay? There's, there's three fences there. Forrest Friends said it, and it's guarded. It's got video surveillance. Why would, why would that be? There has to be something important there, right? Um, but the FBI had access there. So when they raided Forrest, and by the way, Forrest was raided twice. He was raided in 1979, I believe, which is right after Skippy died in 78. His mother died in 79. He was raided. His art gallery was raided, I believe. And then, of course, as we know, he was, he was raided again in 2009. Okay. So if there was anything in here, they would have found it. If there was anything in Forrest Fenn's house, which is over here, they would have found it. But what about if he hid it up here in the mountains? And what if, like I said, that trove of knowledge changes what is, what is known to be here? Something major, and I'll show you an example. Um, here's the Laredo Chapel with the Miracle Staircase. If you go across the street, okay, this is the oldest church in the United States. It was built in the 1600s by a Frenchman, right? So this building here, between the two, is the oldest building that's not a church in Santa Fe. And if you research this building, it's privately owned right now, and I believe it's an Indian museum. And I also believe that they discovered that it is built on top of an ancient Pueblo. So if this is built on top of an ancient Pueblo, what's under here? What's under here? 
what's over here where his gallery was? Remember, why did he want to buy Olga's property so bad? Okay. Um, what's up here? Did he discover gold? Remember, the Spanish were here for gold. That was their ultimate goal. But while they were here, they spent time with the Indians. So they're going to learn from each other, right? They keep the documentation. And the Indians are forced out. For his friend described it. He goes, they had to flee. They had to flee back to New Mexico. So if you listen to the poem, he said, if you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down your quest to cease. Okay, so now you're up in Wyoming. <clears throat> you found the treasure chest when you looked quickly down from the blaze. It's right there, right? But and then he says, but Terry scanned with marble gaze. Okay, that's the hint to campsite number nine. So you got the chest. And he says, just, just take the chest and go in peace. So he's forcing you to leave, right? Well, that's exactly what they did to the Spanish in San Lazaro. But he left his chest there, right? That's the one that Forrest found. Uh, a Spanish guy left. He said, Pedro left his chest there. I found it. But I got four more keys or four more chests with this knowledge. And he was forced to go in peace, go south, or, or they were going to get killed. Get out of here. So if, if the wheel was the home of Brown, okay, then you could say, essentially, that this would also be the home of Brown, current day. And if he says put in below it, you'd be putting in down here. But this time, you're working up. But again, this part that I'm talking about here, I don't have a solution down here. And I can tell you right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to talk to people, and, and maybe we'll find out a solution. But I'm not going to do anything secretive or anything by myself, because honestly, for me, I'm done. I, don't, I can't afford. I believe it's going to be really hard to find what's over here. And I'm not going to do it. So whatever's out there in the trove, I'm not going to go look for it. But I do enjoy talking about it. And I don't, I don't care if somebody else finds it. I would rather sit here and work collaboratively as a group, which we seem to do pretty good. I mean, that last live show I had was great. Everybody was getting along, you know. And I think that, that there are parallels between all of our sobs. I mean, look at it, even Pam Shetron, right? And the other thing I want you guys to remember, and I've said this before, and I wasn't aware of this until recently, if you um, look at the Rockies, let me go way out here. If you look at the Rockies, okay, let me, let me just draw like a, a, a polygon, right? If you look at the Rockies, basically, if you go from here, okay, and then you went down here, all the way down and you go down to, to um, north of Santa Fe, and then you go over here, okay, and then we go up here. Everything in that box is considered the Southern Rockies. Okay, They are structurally different from the Northern Rockies, okay? I've, I've shown that. I've talked about that. I've proved that. I showed you how the geology is different. Most of the gold belts and stuff that they find are going to be over here, because of, because of, just because of the way the uh, the the ground is set up due to the tectonic plates in the Southern Rockies. And if you'll notice, he said somewhere in the mountains north of Santa Fe, those are the only mountains north of Santa Fe. Yes, yes, there are Rockies over here. We'll go and we'll we'll, we'll highlight those now, right? So we have. These Rockies, okay, and of course they go all the way up to Alaska. I'm just going to go up this far, right? So, oops. So those there are what they call the Northern Rockies, and those Rockies are not north of Santa Fe. They are. If, if you consider the fact that uh, Forrest considers um, anything from, what would it be, 271 degrees to, to uh, 89 degrees north, but directly north is are these mountains. And like I said, they're, they're structurally different from the northern Rockies. So the southern Rockies go all the way up and to and including the bighorns and the mountains just right over here. But it does not include anything over on this side. These are all considered the Northern Rock. You might not think that's a hint, and you'd be right. Okay, that that's um, 
subjective. But the fact that these are the Southern Rockies and these are Northern Rockies, that's a fact. That's not subjective. The fact that these are um, geologically different from the Northern Rockies, that's another fact. It's not subjective. So I'm just throwing something out there. Like I said, I'm going to stick to my solve. I believe that the trove was here, was here, and they moved it. They moved it. All right? And I believe that there was a title in there that would have sent you back down to Mexico where the real treasure was. That was a door prize. The real treasure, the, the, the valuable thing that you're looking for, and I don't mean in gold, but the valuable thing that's going to change history is going to be somewhere here. So that's kind of what we're messing around with, street and trusted. Or, uh, well, trust is in Col- looking in Colorado. But, but, I mean, just overall, we discuss things in common. But that's what we're, we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out what, what, what's going on down here. What, what, what is here? Okay. And that's, that's going to be very difficult um, because it has to change Southwest history. I believe that it's here. I believe it, you look at every single thing in this whole state, considering how many people searched all over the place. This is the place. And everybody avoided it because it's south of Santa Fe. And he said north of Santa Fe. But you got to remember, he never said that the clues had to be north of Santa Fe. He never said that the uh, trove is north of Santa Fe. He said the treasure chest is north of Santa Fe. But if the treasure chest had the title that sends you to another one, there are no rules down here. So anyway, I don't know what you guys think. I just want to put that out there to kind of explain where I'm at. And um, so now I don't have to keep explaining it every time I'm live. But that, that's what I believe is going on. And yeah, this this stuff down here is new to me. I knew that there were a trove, but I didn't know where where the trove was. But now that I'm listening to everybody, because my concern, all right, let's look at it this way. The way I looked at it is that you don't need to worry about that because once you find the treasure chest up here, okay, now everything's going to come together. You're going to get the title and you're going to find out where it is. But because the the chase is over now, and the treasure chest is gone. Jack does not have the title. Jack didn't solve the poem. He never gave a solution. So now it might be extremely hard to find to find out where we need to go. Oh, by the way, I, I just messing around. When I was talking to Rick Nowak, there's a there's a uh, treasure hunt out there called the Secret, and some of the the things haven't been found yet. So many people believe that for the secret, the the, uh, the actual item is in Saint Augustine. Um, and they look near there. But I was talking to Rick Nowak, for any of you guys that are looking at it, that are up in uh, near North Carolina or South Carolina. Um, I think it's right down here. I, and like I said, I'm not going to discuss the secret because I'm not working on that. I believe it's right down here, Stone Mountain and Stone Mountain Peak, but a Grist Mill Spring. I believe that, that, it, that the treasure is down here. If you follow the clues in the poem, what he's doing is he's taking you up this river. He's taking you up that river that I have in blue. The river starts um, right on the border of Georgia and Florida, and it goes all the way up the Flint River. And then it goes to the Battle of the Flint River, and the Flint River, I believe, keeps going up, and the headwaters are here. But this is up where I believe the chest was. And we were messing around with some other things, too. We were um, discussing. Um, gangsters um bank robbers out of new york we believe somewhere up in here is where they hid their stash um that's not a treasure hunt that's just trying to find gangster loot very uh difficult stuff but i was tracking where we know that that guy went back in the 40s um, or the 30s or maybe in the 20s i don't remember now but cool stuff so I don't want to make this any much longer. I just wanted to put this out there just to tell you um, how I feel and how I think the connection works down in San Lazaro. And and that's what I'm going to primarily try to focus on talking about um, in a non-secretive way, because like I said, I'm not going there. Um, if somebody gets any hints, that's that's good. So stick around when I go live. Stick around. Pay attention to my videos. Pay attention to streets videos and so on and so forth. And um, you might get some hints. Hope you all have a great week. Peace.